A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitani Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim So we will begin Bi'idhnillahi uh, Ta'ala The series on the commentary of Dua Nasiri um, And Bi'idhnillahi Ta'ala We will try to divide it into 40 minute segments uh, For 40 minutes is an easy time For attention to be maintained uh, And uh, there is Barakah in the number 40 As we know from our tradition So it's very uh, interesting that subhanallah uh, in modern pedagogical methods 40 minutes is considered the optimum attention span before we take a break so we'll begin with dua basmalah Ya Rabbi, Ya Rahman, Ya Hanan, Ya Manan, Ya Dhal Jalali, Wa Likram, Ya Quddus, Ya Samad, Ya Wadud, Ilaysa Kamithlihi Shayun, Wa Huwa Sami, Wa Basir, Ya Ahad, Ya Qahar, Ya Wasi, Ya Jabbar, Ya Mutakabir, Ya Allah, Anta Al-Ahad, Wa Lam Yalid, Wa Lam Yulad, Wa Lam Yakun Lahu Kufwan Ahad, Ya Qabid, Ya Basit, Ya Allah, Ya Ruzuk, Lima Ya Shah, Ya Qabid, Ya Nafi, Ya Dar, Ya Allah, Ina Manajwa Shaitan, Ila Lihadun, Ila Dina Amanu, Ila Isi Bidda Arihim, Shayin, Ila Bidda Allahi, Wa Ala Allahi, Fa Ala Tawakkal Al Mu'minun, Ya Muntaqim, Ya Tawab, Ya Allah, Tubu Ilai, Ya Allah, Tubu Ilai, Ya Allah, Tubu Ilai, Ya Allah, Tubu Ilai, Bidda Allah, Fu Kulli Kulli Dhambin, Afu Kamilan, Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Rahmatak, Wasiat Kulli Shayin, يا رحمن أرجو لرحمتك يا رحمن يا مؤيز يا مذيل يا رحمن وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء وبيدك الخير وإنك على كل شيء قدير يا مؤمن يا مان يا رحمن لله ما في السماوات والأرض إن الله هو الغني الحميد يا أيها الناس وأنتم الفكراء إلى الله فالله هو الغني الحميد يا رزاق يا مقيت يا رحمن من يشفي شفاءة حسنة يكون له نسيب منها ومن يشفى شفاءة سيئة يكون له كفل منها وكان الله على كل شيء مقيت يا فتاه يا وهاب يا رحمن فعلم ما في قلوبهم فأنزل السكينة عليهم وثبهم فتحا قريبا Irham lana ya Rahman, irham lana ya Rahman, irham wa matahbibika Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ya Rahman. Ya Quddusun ya Samadun ya Wadud, kul nazal hu ruhi al-Qudusi mina Rabbaka bil-haqqi wa li yutabbita al-lazina amanu wa huda wa bushra lil-muslimin. Ya Ahadun ya Samadun al-lazhi lam yalid wa lam yulid wa lam yakun lahu kufwan ahad. Wa astaghfiru Rabbakum thumma tubu ilayhi inna Rabbi Rahimun Wadud wa huwa al-Ghafuru al-Wadud. ربنا إنك تحب الأفوف إنك أفو كريم تحب الأفوف أفو عنا يا ربنا يا مولانا يا غياتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من قدمنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من ورائنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من فوقنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من تحتنا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أنا إيماننا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أن شمائلنا نحن عدلك فإلك على بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا رباه يا رحمن يا الله مسلينا سيدنا محمد سبحان الله that was دعاء بسم الله إن شاء الله you can find it إن شاء الله we'll keep it on the website so you can also uh, make it with us for our next uh, next uh, session so um, this is going to be a commentary on Dua Nasiri we recited Dua Nasiri sometime recently in Jama'a when we had a very special need uh, to do with a situation where a minority Muslim community was under uh, attack Alhamdulillah relief has come the Barakatillah Azza wa Jalana and an impending uh, attack was averted. So it's a, it's a very powerful dua as we witnessed. Bi barakatillah azza wa jalla. And um, as is known, so for those who who are not familiar, dua an nasiri is a dua uh, written by Muhammad ibn Nasir. Um, he was a great zahid. He was, he was a great uh, ascetic. Uh, from the du'a we understand that he must have been a great Arif Billah, someone who knew Allah closely. Uh, so it's not possible to write something like this otherwise. He lived around 400 years ago in what is present-day Morocco. 
and uh, he wrote this dua asking Allah's help to ward off the French invasions of the time. And subhanAllah, they used to get in jama'ah and recite this dua in the masajid. And the authorities were so afraid of the power of it that they would ban, ban it uh, from being recited. And it is said that from the time they began, the banning of the dua is the time uh, when the, the present day uh, dynasty in Morocco of Muhammad Sadis, it is said that it is from that time that that house was, was come being established or, or, or in other words that the Muslims were gaining the upper hand. So subhanAllah, it's a powerful dua. And one of the reasons it is powerful is it, it, um, it um, uh, gathers together some of the most beautiful adab of making dua, some of the most beautiful uh, manners of making dua. Uh, and, but not only that, also in its substance, because it calls upon Allah in a way that only someone who knows who the creator is and who the creation is, who, are, who your Lord is and who you are, is call, can call upon God. And when, when you know that and you, are, you, you come to Allah in that way, you establish a very a strong connection. So by studying the commentary of this dua, you're also studying aqidah. Hmm? That's one of the reasons uh, we wanted to make a commentary of it, because as we know, uh, nowadays most Muslims don't have a very um, deep understanding of who Allah is. And until that understanding is, is, is um, uh, deep and comprehensive and strong, uh, it is very hard to build your found, build your foundation of uh, ibadah, your worship, unless you really know who you're worshiping. So knowing your Lord is fundamental, it is considered foundational. This is one of the reasons this dua, when we do the commentary, we will go through aqidah. And then there are other passages in it that are hard to understand. And uh, so inshallah the commentary will help. And especially in the later parts, he touches upon... Um, many realities in our tradition, spiritual realities in our tradition that unfortunately uh, not many of us are aware of. Um, and the reason we are unaware of these spiritual realities is because of the fact that we are just emerging from what in our history we consider the second catastrophe, uh, which is the colonial period. We consider the first catastrophe to, to beset the Muslim Ummah, uh, the Mongol invasion, which happened roughly a thousand years ago, uh, subhanAllah. But 200 years after the Mongols invaded Baghdad, uh, the descendants of those invaders actually became Muslim. Hmm? And they are, the, uh, they are the ancestors of what was later the Mughal Empire in India and other empires. So Allah's plan is always ascendant and will always uh, triumph. That is not something we worry about. But it is important we know where we are and what we are facing and what we have faced and the damage it has done. Uh, because once you know where you come from, you know how to conduct yourself in your present situation and you know where you're going and what steps to take to get there successfully and easily bismillah ta'ala so um, we'll start with re with reading the dua i will also put the dua up on the website so you can download it and keep it with you um, and maybe what i will do since we are already 10 minutes into our 40 minutes is i'm going to read a few pages and then i will stop as is needed uh, and then go through the commentary bismillah so Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi Ya man ila rahmatil mafaru wa man ilayhi yalja'ul mudtarru O you to whose mercy one flees, you in whom the one in need and distress seeks refuge Wa ya qareeb al-ahwi ya mawlahu wa ya mu'aitha kulli man da'ahu O Master, you whose pardon is near, O you who help all who call on him. Hmm. 
Because the Afna ya Mu'ith al Du'afa, wa Hasbuna ya Rabbi Anta wa Kafa, we seek your help, or you who help the weak, you are enough for us, O Lord. Fala ajala min adimi kudratik, wala azza min azizi satwatik. There is nothing more majestic than your immense power, and nothing mightier than the might of your force. La izi mulkik al muluku takhda'u. تَخْفِدُوا قَدْرَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَرْفَعُوا Kings are humble to the might of your domain and you lower or elevate whomever you wish. وَالْأَمْرُ كُلُّهُ إِلَيْكَ رَدُّهُ وَبِيَدَيْكَ حَلُّهُ وَأَقْدُهُ The entire affair returns to you and the release or conclusion of all matters is in your hand. وَقَدْ رَفَعَنَا أَمْرَنَا إِلَيْكَ وَقَدْ شَقَوْنَا دُعَفَنَا عَلَيْكَ We have presented our affair before you and we complain to you of our weakness. We'll stop there. So that's just, I just finished uh, the first page and I went into the second. Um, now, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin. One of the, the beautiful uh, mannerisms of presenting yourself before your Lord is to establish that connection. Before you go to anybody and you want to have a uh, an honest chat, a real talk, a sincere conversation, uh, especially if you're going in need and you want something or you need something from the one you are asking, It is, it is imperative to establish that sincere connection. And know that there is no being who knows you better than your Lord. So when you go in front of Allah to make dua, you can't fake it. You can't really fake it. Of course, I, I know this commonly used phrase, fake it till you make it. It, it has its uh, uh, usefulness and its times when it may be used. But when you want, when you want to be a person whose dua is answered, hmm, that you raise your hand and Allah answers your dua, then sincerity, in a, a moment, sincerity is worth several years faking it. Sincerity is hard, but it is also very easy. And sincerity is something that is incredibly beautiful. And when you are faced with someone who is making a sincere plea or a sincere request, it is very hard to deny them, very hard to deny them. So know that of all, there's, there's just one creator and your creator knows you even better than you know yourself. So, you know, when we go to human beings and we request from them, when they realize, oh, this person is really petitioning me because they really want this and they really, these are their reasons and their truthful reasons. Uh, they cannot be denied, you know, they're not made up excuses. They are spoken by somebody who is a, is a true and righteous human being. It's very hard to deny that. So what, what is happening here in this dua is you're going to Allah and before you begin, you're stating, Oh Allah, you are this, you are this, you are this, I am this, I am this, I am this. Now to state that means you really know who your Lord is and you know who you are. So you know your creator and you know the creation. So this is aqidah, knowing your Lord. What, what do you really know about Allah? What do you believe about Allah? What does it mean? Hmm? So um, hmm. let's read, the, let's, let's go into this a little bit. O you to whose mercy one flees, you in whom the one in need and distress seeks refuge. So this is understood that if you are in need, really you can only go to Allah to help. He's not just appealing to uh, Rabbana's hmm, 
Mm. It's not just appealing to the fact that Allah is one who helps those who are in distress. He's actually saying that there can be no other one who can help except Allah. So he says, you in whom the one in need and distress seeks refuge. O Master, you whose pardon is near, O you who help all who call on him. Mm. We seek your help, O you who help the weak. You are enough for us. So what is he saying here? Now, you see, such a statement is made by one who understands that there is no source of help nor support except Allah. What does that mean? That means that everything in creation, huh? so everything in creation obviously is accepting the creator. Everything in creation is sustained and maintained uh, and held up and facilitated by the Creator, by Allah. It is Allah Azza wa Jalla who is making everything happen at any instant. Um, how does one explain this? Oh. And what he's saying here is, the way we understand, the way we understand Allah is different to the way many people understand Allah. Um, we understand Allah as being a supreme, uh, all-encompassing, single force who is the creator. Now, we also understand that there is no separation between the creator and creation. Hmm? So we say that Allah created uh, and he is all powerful. So we say that nothing occurs except by Allah's will. Hmm? Nothing ex occurs except by Allah's will and by His power because we say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. Sahih? Now, when you think about that very deeply, what that means is the fact that I can raise and lower my glasses or I can think of a thought and articulate it in speech or that this has been recorded and that you are able to listen and hear and understand it. Uh, all of this is happening by the will and power of Allah at any given moment. So we don't understand God as a being who created, who put everything in place, who made natural laws, who made the universe, who decreed the different types of beings in the universe, uh, who put down the laws of physics, etc. And is watching how, how things are taking place and now and then can uh, uh, interfere and answer the, uh, no. Because were we to understand God in that way, we are implying a separation between the creation and the creator. Now, implying a separation uh, necess necessarily means you are implying a limit. Because anything that is separate, now this hand is separate to this hand. So, so if this hand is separate to this hand, this hand has a boundary. My fingers have an inner and an outer boundary and this hand has an inner and an outer boundary. Hence, they can be separate, joined, but they can join it, but they have a limit. Now, if you consider, therefore, that God is separate, hence has to be 
having limits you are making a huge mistake in uh, understanding the divine because the divine cannot be limited if you limit divinity by definition that is not divi divine see you cannot limit an all powerful god were you to make a limit on an all powerful god well that god is not all powerful hence there is now some space outside your boundary hence you can have other deities or other gods so and this is this is where islam and our religion which is only uh, an, uh, the final form of the same message that came from the time of the creation of Adam Islam, and before that from the time of the jinn uh, who used to be were created before the human being uh, it's the same message la ilaha illallah there is no god but Allah only one only one so now how do we understand this if there is no separate there cannot be limits obviously if you limit then you are opening space up for more than one and in different religions uh, especially where the theology is not very clear uh, people found this a problem when they thought about it deeply and hence they be, they there were there are some very sophisticated uh, theologies that 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 have come to explain this concept of Allah being uh, complete uh, but not uh, well Allah being you know they're being God and they're being human being and so this is separate and we need to connect it so then we have uh, different religions have different ways of trying to find a link hmm? we say there's no need to do all of that it's very simple la ilaha illallah that's half of our shahada we will come to muhammad rasulullah and its importance later on especially in the anasiri we say there's no reason to be confused allah is as he is and there is nothing but him he is one and there is no other god so then how do we understand so we say that allah created he put all the natural laws in place he created human beings and everything else and he never stepped back and watched he is within creation at all time so we say allah is completely in you at the same time he is completely not in you uh, so we also say my lifting this glass and putting it down my moving my hand my speaking i am thinking the thought to say the sentence and my neurons are firing as they need to move all the muscles in my mouth as it needs and my nervous system that has been programmed with speech and how to articulate which is very complex science uh, is doing all of that uh, but it is not doing it on its own it is doing it in every instant of time by the will and power of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So how is he doing that? So when we say in every moment Allah is recreating the entirety of creation. So every moment everything is shattered, brought back. Ah. So can he then shatter something, bring back something in a different form? Of course. Can he then shatter something and bring back something in multiple forms? Of course. So you know the awliya Allah, the people who are close to Allah, the friends, uh, and of course the anbiya Allah, alayhum salam, before who are greater than the awliya Allah, so definitely they knew it too. They understood all of this. Hence things that are now we are understanding are possible, like time travel, uh, multiplicity of dimensions, different realities, all of those were common knowledge to traditional Muslims so old time Muslims they knew that Allah is the only one who is causing anything to be hence can make anything be as he pleases so hence he can make a single human being live in multiple times and locations at the same time no 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 problem with it 
these things are very hard for us to grasp now but if you accept the fact that there is only one divine force that is in charge and also able there is only one force that is able and by necessity that uh, that able force has to be one because if it was not one it would be a limited ability huh. and a limited ability is not divine divine god is unlimited and only god is able hmm? and god's ability is not curtailed or contingent in any way god's ability is absolute all encompassing transcendent completely within everything completely without completely encompassing at all time so we say our ability we call that contingent ability it is completely dependent on our, on allah allowing us to do what we want to do or we think we are doing or we plan to do etc allah's ability is not contingent upon anything it is absolute allahumma salli ala sayyidina muhammad Uh, so the one who understands that realizes that there is really uh, no power or might that one can seek refuge in except Allah because there is no reality a true reality there's no true reality except allah our reality is a dependent reality allah is independent so we cannot we cannot really limit allah azza wa jalla in any sense or form even to a definition except to say allah has no limits Uh, no needs no wants etc so these are going into more deeper aqida but those are called the negative virtues negative not because they are have a negative connotation because the only way we can say who allah is is by saying he's not this and not that and not this so if you study the books of aqida in depth you will come across these terms hmm? So subhanallah Allah is not like the creation and there's a ayah fi al-Qur'an al-Karim which is used a lot in books of aqida to explain who Allah is Allah says laysa ka mithlihi mithlihi shay'un there is nothing like him and he says wa huwa samiul basir very interesting subhanallah in that ayah the ayah goes on to say and he is the all hearing all seeing so if you think about it it's a contradictory in a sense it's a contradictory statement there is nothing like unto him and he is the all hearing and the all seeing so what does that mean that means allah's hearing and allah's sight is not like your hearing and your sight or my hearing and my sight allah's hearing allah's sight is not limited in any way or form hence not limited in space not limited in time can see all things at all time or that is ever going to occur has occurred was going to occur etc etc uh, inside outside he didn't sees everything hears everything without being dependent on time and space and our hearing and our sight is dependent on where we are and it is a linear linear thing you hear and you see dependent on time now people who are able or people who reach a high state with allah azza wa jalla are given a certain way of a certain depth of understanding that comes from experience 
uh, that enables them to understand how these things can happen and we'll go into that in, in a little more depth later. Um, I am a little concerned that we are coming close to the end of our 40 minutes and we went into some very deep uh, Akraid or understands things of our lives. So we'll come back to the poem and be in Ta'ala in another segment. We'll, we'll, we'll continue, right? So he says, Ya man ila rahmatil mafarru wa man ilayhi yalja'ul yalja'ul mudtarru. O you to whose mercy one flees, you in whom the one in need and distress seeks refuge. O Master, you whose pardon is near, O you who help all who call on him, we seek your help, O you who help the weak. You are enough for us, O Lord. So this is one of the reasons. He says, Rabbi anta wakafa. Hasbuna, ya Rabbi anta wakafa. So whenever you say hasbuna Allah wa niyam al waqil, it is by understanding. Uh, it is by understanding who Allah is and who you are actually saying is sufficient for you. The one who has all power, all ability, not limited in any way, is definitely sufficient for you because your very existence, your very being on earth and your very moment-to-moment -moment existence is something that only Allah is allowing to happen. Now the question arises, how does this work with free choice? If it is Allah who is really doing and controlling all things, right? And that question was asked in a previous class. How do we understand free choice versus Allah's control? And so that's an important one. Inshallah, maybe we'll uh, I'll come to that in part two. Make a note somewhere. Mm. Mm. But let's go into the, the next ayah here. فَلَا أَجَلَ مِنْ عَذِيمِ قُدْرَتِكْ فَلَا أَعَزَ مِنْ عَزِيزِ سَتْوَتِكْ There is nothing more majestic than your immense power uh, and nothing mightier than the might of your force. Now these lines are understood. Oh, this is who I'm calling on. I am calling on the one divine, the one divine. Hmm. So try to be a person who establishes a true connection with the one divine. Once that connection is established, there is no need of one. Or anything else, it will truly be Hasbuna Ya Rabbi Anta Wakafa. Ah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Once we establish this connection with the One Divine, then we will be people. We raise our hands. We ask. We our dua will be accepted. Nowadays, we are many in number, but poor in our substance. Mm -hmm. And there are many millions and millions making dua. But that connection is very weak. To um, establish that connection, you have to have sincerity and truthfulness. You cannot, you cannot circumvent. You cannot make it without that. You know, you won't build a true relationship unless you are sincere. This is true. Mm. Ah, subhanallah. So we were saying that it is true of all relationships and certainly the one with the divine, you cannot uh, escape that reality. And once that sincerity and truthfulness is established, everything else becomes very clear and very easy because it, the foundation is unshakable, unshakable. So, subhanallah, so may Allah enable us to be people of truth and sincerity 
and to uh, and may Allah make that uh, means for us to reach him and may Allah make that the hallmark of our connection with our beloved our Lord our master our guide and the beloved of the beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so I think we will end now with uh, dua as 40 minutes is coming to a close uh, and also the video got interrupted because of uh, time for Salat al-Makhrib. So I will uh, hopefully that will get stitched together seamlessly. And we will make our dua, we call it dua of greeting and we will finish. Uh, and inshallah this one I'll make in English and then I will post uh, the text of this one onto the website also. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin in the name of the only, the one, the absolute, the all, the one who sustains but is not sustained, the one who creates but is not created, the one who is the origin of all, the all-powerful in front of whom there is no other power, the all-able in front of whom there is no other ability, the all-seeing, the all-hearing, the watchful over, the intimately near, the sublime, the apparent, the hidden, the only reality, truth transcendent, truth apparent, truth manifest, truth that cannot be denied, truth known even if unacknowledged, truth that pours out of acknowledgement, the reality of all, the true state of being and all else is mirage, the true state of existence and all else is fancy, the beloved of all who believe, the saviour of all who are saved, the guide of all those who wander, the one from whom we came, the one we return to, the one to whom we belong. Our true breath that gives us life, our God, the eternal everlasting one, we raise our hands to you and we implore. We implore and raise the mention of your beloved, our liege Lord, our Saviour, our Master, our Guide, the perfected one, the chosen one, the one whose true essence only you comprehend, O truth, the one whose light only you can truly see, O light, the one whose mercy is a breath of your divine mercy, Ya Rahman the seal of the noble body of prophets, the leader of the noble messengers, the foremost knower of you, the greatest one among those conscious of you, the beloved of you and our beloved, send upon him, his noble family, his blessed companions, his friends and brethren, all those who love and obey and follow him for all time. Send your special blessings, salutations, peace and noblest greetings upon, upon them for all time. And let your greeting upon them and upon us our lord be the seal of your mercy the emblem of your protection the guard and the armor the ennobling robes robes of light that clothe adorn and distinguish us upon the earth in the grave and in our resurrection the light that carries us over the bridge as swift as lightning and the light with which we are cleansed and made beautiful so we may present ourselves to you O our lord without shame but in modesty and by the light and strength and blessing of your greeting, our Lord, we may dare to be in your majestic, beautiful presence. Ya Rabbana. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask you to vanquish your enemies with a complete vanquishment. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask you to obliterate every obstacle they place in our path towards pleasing you by our good deeds. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, we ask that you open every door of nearness to you. O Allah, by the light of this greeting, keep us safe from loss, from grief, from wastefulness, from filth, from impure relations and from fear. We fear only you, O our Lord, and all our hope is in you, O Allah, by the light of this greeting. Remove the veils that blind us from the light and strength and protection of truth, from knowing truth as truth and falsehood as falsehood. And O Allah, by the light of this greeting, give us the ability to stay away from what is false and enable us to advance in what is good. O Allah, by the light of your greeting, cause our ascension. O Allah, by the light of your greeting, cause our ascension. O Allah, by the light of your greeting, cause our ascension. Ya Allah, bi nuri salama takirfa ana. Ya Allah, bi nuri salama takirfa ana. Ya Allah, bi nuri salama takirfa ana. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahman. And join us, O our Lord, as long as we remain here in the dunya, in our time in the barzakh, and after that to the to the companionship, the intimate companionship by which all our loneliness is banished and by which we are gladdened of those you have sent and established your eternal greeting upon the most noble elevated company. No.
Mm-hmm.